you may find on your wooden plane that, you know, in the process of making it, maybe you over jointed the bottom or you filed a little bit too much and the mouth is a little bigger than you would like. So I'm going to show you how you can fix that. I've got an old uh, wooden uh, coffin smoother that I got from my father-in-law. He just had it sitting on a shelf in his office. He asked me if I wanted any of his tools, and this was one of the few things that, that looked like I might be able to have some use for it. It's in nice shape. I mean, it's a little beat up, but there's not too many cracks on it. A few months ago, I cleaned up the blade, and it looks amazing. But if we look at the mouth, you can see the mouth is huge. It looks to me like somebody actually took a chisel and, and opened it up there. That's not just obviously wear and tear. So what I'm going to do is uh, fix this plane. It's essentially the same process as on a Krenov style plane. So the way it works is I'm going to route out an area in front of the mouth and we'll, we'll glue in a, a piece and, and then reshape it to... Uh, to give us a good tight mouth. I've got a piece of maple here. Now this, this, you know, as most of these planes, this is beach. I've got some beach kicking around, but you know, this is so old. I'm sure it's well over a hundred years old. This is really hard. I think it's probably harder than any beach I have floating around. So I'm going to use maple. I happen to have a piece that's in the ballpark size wise. So I'll go ahead and I'll route this out. If we take a look at this, I've, I don't know if you can see it on here, but I've drawn a line where the front of the blade or the tip of the blade is. That gives me a sense of, you know, where I want to stop my insert, right? It's going to sit about like that. So I'm going to, I'm going to cut this to maybe just slightly wider than the blade or maybe about the same width as the blade. I'll draw out with a pencil uh, where I want my cutout to be. And then I'll take a router and uh, route that out. All right, I've got the uh, plane clamped here. I needed a uh, reference so I could use my square to mark things out. So I, I just clamped this on here and I, I tweaked the clamp so that, so that I was perpendicular to my lines that I drawn here where the blade is. So then using that reference, of course, on a, on a Krenov plane, Right, you've got straight sides, so that's not a big deal. Uh, so I've come out about, I think about an inch and an eighth from the side there, that looked about right. I've got some lines there. So I'm going to now route that out. Now before I do that, I want to scribe some lines. So I'm gonna take my marking knife and, and incise those lines so they're nice and crisp. And once I'm done routing as close as I can, I can then use my chisel to index in those lines. I've got a quarter inch bit in my router. And fortunately there's enough room here. I can just drop it down into that hole and start routing. If, if there wasn't, I would just, you know, plunge uh, manually. I don't, I don't think I need a plunge router for this. So I'm going to go ahead and, and route that out. I'm, I'm only about an eighth inch deep now. I want to get a sense of how it's going to route. And then I'll, I'll go in, I don't know, a quarter, five sixteenths or so. All right, I'm pretty much to full depth now. I, typically in a case like this, I want to do one more pass just slightly deeper. And before I do that, I want to trim off these fuzzies because what happens is the, the router kind of rides up on those a little bit, even though they're very small. And I, I don't get a, a real consistent depth on my cut. So I'm going to just sand those off. 
Yeah, it doesn't take much. Um, and I'll go ahead and route. I just went down, you know, less than a 64th to finish this up. All right, I've routed as close to my line as I dare. I'm, I don't know, less than a 32nd away in most spots. So I will now use my chisel. And because I've got that knife line, the chisel just fits in there nicely. And I can go ahead and clean up the rest of this. So I'll go ahead and do that all the way around and then we'll cut a piece to fit in there. I've got this cut now. Now I only cut part of it just in case I messed up. So uh, I've got it so it fits pretty nicely. It's pretty snug there. It actually gets a touch snugger at, at this end. So uh, what I'm going to do next, I'm, I'm, I'm going to joint this face. I'm going to glue it down like this. And then on my bandsaw, I'll cut it roughly to thickness. And then I'll cut it to length on my chop saw and I'll, I'll maybe tweak a little bit. You know, I might have to take a touch off there. Just like I said, that's a little bit tight there. Um, and then I'll go ahead and uh, glue it in. Okay, here's the first one I cut, which I realized once I got it in there is too short because of how the uh, mouth is on this. Uh, this surface on the front side of the blade, above the blade, is called the wear. Uh, there's a website I'll, I'll link to that talks about this. Um, anyway, I forgot about that. You know, on a Krenov plane, the, that surface goes that direction, so I wasn't worried about the length. But if I want to make sure I cover all that, this needs to be longer. So I've got this fitting nicely. I'll go ahead and glue it in and then uh, let it dry overnight and then we'll go ahead and finish this up. All right, it's the next day, or actually two days later, and I've got this in my vise here. Of course, the glue is dry, so I'm just going to use my plane to, to flush this or get it very close to flush. Okay, on that last pass, I could tell I was just hitting the uh, plane. So now I'm going to go back to my uh, sandpaper, sand it flat. All right, that's uh, sanded now, but I realize now that it's sanded, I, f I sanded off the lines that show me where the blade edge is. Uh, so I'm, you know, I had, had a line here and here that I could have trimmed, you know, close to but not quite to there and then fine-tuned it. Uh, that should not be a problem on a Krenov plane. You know, generally you've got this flat surface and, and I could just, you know, basically trim my insert flush with that. Remember, we, we had to file that to, to make the mouth opening. So that would have given me a good starting point. So what I'm going to do or what I should have done is uh, transferred my lines up to maybe a piece of tape on the side here and then I could redraw the line and I'd know where I'm at. I'm going to put this on my bench and come in this way and just chisel a little bit at a time until I can get the blade you know close to uh, where I want to be and then I'll file it the rest of the way. Okay, I've got this all set now. It took a while. I've probably spent at least an hour on it. And, and that was because of the shape of the uh, area above the mouth in this plane. It's actually not flat, it's concave. So that made it much more tricky. I, I had to take my chisel and, and go in from this side. And anyway, it was a real pain. 
Uh, it shouldn't be nearly that difficult on a Krenov style plane because the area in front of the blade, you know, angles back. So you should be able to get a file in there fairly easily and uh, make that happen much more quickly. So anyway, it's working great. The patch came out nicely. I've, I've, you know, I've still got a crack over here, but uh, I'm not worried about that. The crack's been there probably since before I was born. Uh, so this is working really well now. Now, one thing that's interesting, just with this particular plane, uh, when I was using it before, the shavings were really getting jammed up inside there when the mouth was huge. Uh, but now that, that I, the mouth is tighter, and, and I did measure it, it's, it's, I got my feeler gauges out, and it's, it's, it's not perfectly even because I had to cut it with a chisel. I couldn't file it nice and flat. So it's, 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 I think at the minimum it's about six thousandths, maybe five, um, and it opens up on the edges to about eight. Uh, I originally started and I was getting shavings about two thousandths thick. This, this last one was more like a thousandth, maybe a little, little bigger than that, but it, it's working really well. And it, interestingly, because it, it doesn't have a chip breaker, it's not really rolling up the chips like, or, or the shavings like a typical metal plane would or a plane with a chip breaker. So they tend to just come straight out as opposed to coiling up. So that's neither here nor there, but, but at least now that everything's cleaned up, they're not getting bound up in there. So all in all, you know, it's on a Krenov plane, it'd be pretty straightforward to do this. Uh, it's obviously a little more tricky on this one, but uh, should be good to go.